Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 18th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Guy this weekend looked at hits to his honeypot and found a good number of attempts to find Outlook Web Access admin pages. Aside from trying to exploit any vulnerabilities, the most likely thing that an attacker is going to do here is credential stuffing, where they will try usernames and passwords that they found before against this admin page. If successful, there are sort of two common routes an attacker would go. First of all, sending spam using your mail server. That's of course always attractive, but uh, more severely, they may try to launch a business email compromise where they're injecting themselves into conversations to either simply steal money or to further compromise the organization by sending email from trusted accounts. What was also interesting in this particular case was that many of the hits came from an organization that identifies itself as Stretchoid.com. You can add yourself to their block list where they will not scan you, but really not much known about who is actually behind this or who is running these scans. They sort of try to claim that they are researchers and not really going to do any harm, but really hard to tell without knowing who who's actually behind them. And sticking with email for the next story, Edison is a somewhat popular email client in the Apple world, so for Mac OS and iOS. And late last week, Edison released a new update that allowed synchronization of email content across different devices. And apparently something went wrong here that allowed iOS users to gain access to other users' emails. And they didn't even have to do anything that sort of happened accidentally and somewhat randomly where you all of a sudden saw someone else's email. Now, Edison has released uh, the iOS email client was affected from this. It's not really clear if the iOS client was the only one that sort of leaked the data or the only one that was actually able to see the data that was leaked from other clients as well. But according to Edison, only the iOS client was affected and the Mac OS client with particular update, well, is still out there and is still working just fine. The bad version was available for about 10 hours and has since been removed. If you're using Edison, you probably should change your email credentials just in case that they got leaked. And Kaspersky has an interesting blog post about the next iteration of what they're calling ComFun or also Reductor. Uh, This is a little bit more sophisticated malware and malware that has in the past been innovative in how they're doing command and control. The latest example They're actually using the HTTP status codes. Uh, So instead of sending like a 200 for a normal uh, response or 404 for file not found, uh, they're using other 400 codes in order to send commands uh, to infected systems. In addition, they're also using a very specific e-tag. E-tags are typically used to identify when a particular uh, file was cached by the browser. So uh, that way, it's able to detect that a file has been updated on the server. Well, here they're using a static e-tag in order to indicate that uh, they're actually connecting to an authentic uh, command control server. Now, the auth status codes, that's actually something that should be sort of on your standard detection list. Uh, That's a classic long tail analysis where you're looking for any sort of status codes that you haven't seen before. And that should certainly uh, trigger here. Now, the ETAC, if I read it correctly, the write-up from Kaspersky, that's only sent over TLS. So you may not see that if you're not uh, doing TLS interception. And that may be a little more difficult to detect. Uh, So you would see the same attack over and over, uh, which is actually sort of normal if a static file on the server hadn't been updated yet. 
And well, if you need yet another example why you shouldn't expose admin interfaces to the public internet, then look no further than the latest update for PanOS from Palo Alto Networks. CVE 2020-2018 is an authentication bypass vulnerability in the panorama context switching feature that would allow admin access to an unauthenticated user. In addition, there is also an XML external entity vulnerability 2020-2012 that also could be used by an unauthenticated attacker with network access to the panorama management interface to read arbitrary files on the system. Now, these arbitrary file read vulnerabilities are always a little bit tricky to sort of gauge their severity. But remember how in the past, particular against uh, VPN concentrators, firewall admin interfaces, they have often then been used uh, to uh, gain additional access uh, to these devices and completely compromise them so uh, don't underestimate this well and this is it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye